And we are back with part two of the endocrine system. If you haven't had a chance to listen to the first one, I do encourage you to go back, take a listen. We're going to get right into it today. So here we go. Part two of the endocrine system. Okay, so we're back to the endocrine system. Um, It's funny because when we were talking about this, we knew... Uh, pretty much right away that there's so much information when we're talking about this subject matter and this topic. So um, no surprise, we're doing a part two. (laughs) And, um, you know, the first episode, we focused more on the specific hormones and the hormonal response we feel um, specifically to cortisol, serotonin, and uh, dopamine. Um, And then you kind of wonder, okay, what are we talking about? Why are we talking about this? So I wanted to just say first off the bat, like if you're sitting there being like, okay, I just like to lift weights. I want (laughs) to do CrossFit. Why are we talking about hormones? What's, What's the point about talking about these things? It really comes down to if you can understand what is happening in your body at any given time, you're going to be able to respond better in that situation right so we've all experienced that moment where we are you know at the gym maybe and you're about to lift heavy or three two one and you're like shit I got seven rounds and I gotta run every round like that feeling of um you know your palms are sweaty or maybe you're at in front of a conference and you have to stand up and talk Mm -hmm. in front of people right so when you when your body goes through that reaction um you if you can understand what's happening you can respond better right so sure. yeah. um so last week last That's time a great recap <laughs> thank you <laughs> <laughs> so last time we talked about the the hormones um i wanted to start today's conversation more around um that fight or flight response so that feeling what's happening in the body and what is um like the sympathetic, the parasympathetic nervous system, like what, what those things are and what role they play. So Kev, um, if you can start, uh, with regards to the nervous systems, what's happening in those moments or what are those things I should say? Yeah. So the, like anything else, we're, we're starting with geeking out, um, probably be better to do it the other way where like most podcasts will start with stories and <laughs> nice ones and we get right into the geeky geeky shit but I love that um so the um la- last podcast uh, part one we mm-hmm. talked about like you said the hormones mm-hmm. um and so the the mm-hmm. kind of the endocrine system as related to fitness um because we we just kind of fixated on the the three big one, hormones um And I think it's now we're kind of getting into more of the nervous systems. Mm -hmm. You have your like parasympathetic, your sympathetic, and uh, a a big one that we discuss is your central nervous system as well. But um, today to define our terms, uh, like we talked about in our most recent podcast, the um, the, uh, human performance podcast, to define our terms. um, and, And so we all understand what we're talking about. We have two nervous systems that really dictate um kind of these this fight or flight response um to a certain stimulus um so so i.e stress um but then we have on the other side of the coin we have um and that's our sympathetic nervous system we have our parasympathetic nervous system which is um also known as rest and digest um and so what's happening in the body specifically um when you're when you're um, kind of, so first of all, I think we understand from last pod, we understood from the last podcast that we have a trigger, and it res- we it, it it causes our bodies to respond in a certain way, mm-hmm. and I want to touch on that later because okay. it, it doesn't work. So keep in I'll mind. I'll try to keep that okay. in mind because <laughs> um, I'll forget. But <laughs> but um, so we have a trigger, uh, like a, you could call it a stimulus, call it a stress. It causes a certain response, um, and then and then our um, our hormones do their job. If you remember the analogy from the last podcast, the uh, kind of maestro conducts the band right. and uh, and to, and dic- dictates the uh, the hormonal response. Okay, so if 
you are, um, so let me ask you a question before we go further with that. Okay. Um, just to spice it up. Um, <laughs> when's the last time, do you have a, an example of when you felt really like chill? Like, like, like just relaxed. Yeah. Oh. Relaxed, chill, kind of Zen. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, I guess so. Um, at my physio appointment, <laughs> does that count? <laughs> yeah, anything counts. Um, this, this is so life. Anything I, goes. <laughs> I had a physio recently with regards to my ankle. So laying on the table um, and she was massaging my heel specifically. So I was laying there and I was literally eyes closed and I've never felt more relaxed than I have <laughs> nice. in probably two months. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> All right. So... So the massage to the heel and the just the general experience of like your environment and the smell, like oftentimes where it's, it's difficult to be in the moment. Um, so um, a lot of this stuff goes unrecognized, which which is fine. Um, uh, you're not like I couldn't imagine putting all of my brain power into being specifically in the moment with every right. single detail like it's not meant to be like that or else like you wouldn't retain any of it yeah. so um but it, it caused a natural response of relaxation where you're you're um so that's the stimulus is your you're the main one is your heel or whatever is mm-hmm. being massaged and and uh in a, in a nice way i would imagine because because it is relaxing and yeah um so so your body's um interpreting that as the kind of a, a relaxation and and uh it turns on that um parasympathetic nervous system so right. what happens there is why you feel relaxed and why it's not just very like black and white someone's touching my heel and you're right. not why you're not a robot is because you have these hormones that are delivering those messages from your neurons um to uh decrease blood flow to your muscle tissue um, decrease your heart rate to put you mm-hmm. in a more, more relaxed state and increase blood flow to your digestive system. Um, so you're going to be able to digest your food a lot quicker, more easily. Your, your digestive system is going to get a lot of attention from your body, um, because that's where it's directing your blood. Um, if you were to, um, if, if you were to do like a, I don't even know if they have this, but you, you know, a skin flush test. So mm-hmm. a, a lot of the times when you're in the opposite and your your muscle is turned on uh, in a certain way, your your skin will will go red where right. in that area. So uh, you can picture an injury like the, the skin uh, like, yeah. uh, beyond swelling, your skin goes red, and so that's your body sending blood to the area, right? So same thing happens in your gut with the parasympathetic nervous system. That's why it's called rest and digest it allows your body to 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 be in a state of recovery um so really 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 important um to give your body this time and there are many ways to do that but that's um and and that's um it's good to recognize that that's kind of serotonin helping to to push that along so rest and digest sleep and post meal like that's right that's kind of and then certain stimulus, like you just described, can can help that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let me ask you another question. So that gives us an understanding of the parasympathetic nervous system. So the sympathetic nervous system. Now, when's the last time you got like a little anxious, palm sweaty, like like um, felt uncomfortable in your own skin? We'll we'll call it. Oh my gosh. Um. <clears throat> I, I, it's hard to think of a specific time, but I kind of have a general, like I think having a child, you're always like the actual <laughs> act of birth. <laughs> no, no, I mean, like I'm trying to think of it's a good example. Well, yeah, sure. I wish I said that now. Well, I did, I guess. <laughs> um, no, but I mean, I'm at home with my daughter and, um, you know, there's times that she's not you know, she's off doing her own thing. And for example, I'm working out in my gym, um, in the garage and she'll like go around the corner. I can't really hear her and I'll be doing stuff. And then you hear that moment of like, she, this did happen this week. So she like screams and instinctually as a mother, you know, if it's a scream of, you know, terror, 
they're scared? Did they fall? Are they, you know, in pain or did they just see a bug? <laughs> and like it was the bug scream, but it's still you still react in that way of like okay, I got to go check on my kid, oh, right? Like yeah. what is it? So like I go around the corner and I see her there and she's like she was flailing at her hat. Okay, and, okay. Okay. I, I want to stop you there. Um <laughs> so and I we'll go further, yeah, but Yeah, yeah. In that time when you from when you heard oh, the yeah. scream to the time you saw her describe the like physical feelings that you the have physical on. feeling was like immediately drop the weight in my hand and run <laughs> so i ran so, no, no, but so, so yeah i think the physical like what like, was happening so, to your body so oh my gosh i wish i could relive it to tell you specifically but i kind of imagine i my heart rate increased and i felt flush um flush like it was a cold hot hot yeah and um and like i do remember being like that sprint you know like that moment of like go yeah. so so um so th- yeah that's that's a really good ex- a story an example of um what's what, like a sympathetic nervous system reaction right. response um same thing um and, and it's it's innate in all of us like and i can i can definitely agree with the the motherly instinct there how it's different because my kid screams it's like is he okay or is he like i can't tell the difference like, <laughs> he's just uh we spend a little too much time together right yeah now. <laughs> it's it's like if he's crying it's like just i can't tell if it's like yeah. what type it's just tears or tears right yeah so um anyways uh <laughs> so the what's going on there is like yeah you're right your your heart rate increases um because you're so juxtapos- a juxtaposition it's a juxtaposition to the parasympathetic right. response where it's more um where it has more to direct the blood flow to so your blood pressure is going to increase your heart rate's going to increase because it has to send blood to all of your muscles because if you if you could freeze frame um your physical kind of like from that stimulus the stimulus would be you hearing the scream that stimulates this response and what will happen is your body's specifically putting you into a fight or flight response which is sympathetic and um your muscles need to contract because you need to be ready Mm -hmm. right so um your muscles it it instantaneously contracts all your muscles but that requires blood flow so your heart rate increases to do that and and instill that um then you're you sweat because it takes a lot of effort for Mm -hmm. your body to do that unbeknownst to you but so your your palms start sweating um this if you just pinpoint this physical feeling um i think a lot of oh sorry one other thing a lot of some people will experience some form of low-level nausea because there is no blood flow to your digestive system because the worst thing that could happen in an emergency is if you have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so your body goes, nope, we don't need to digest anything right now. Uh, we need, so if you've ever been like in an emergency situation, you won't have the, it'll be like numb to, you'll be numb to your digestive system hmm. um, and you'll only um, feel like, you, you'll feel your heart, like you have the too many cups of coffee kind of yeah. experience. Yeah. Um, and I think, as I'm describing this, we can all think of times where we've been in those situations. And the big one you've already said is, uh, if you have a big meeting or, um, or you have a presentation, yeah. public speaking is one of the biggest things that causes this fight or flight response. Um, and then also like, like pre-workout, um, yeah. if you know, you're about to throw down, you're about to do something hard, hard. And you know, you might be thinking, well, why do I have to pee then? Um, that actually okay. has, like, like you, why do I have to pee right before? And I'm nervous and I'm, um, and, and I don't know the specifics to that one, but it's, I could imagine that because your digestive system is shut off, it's just, you're dispelling any, um, anything that's like left over. Yeah. But, um, also I've, um, I've heard this is like, an anecdotal thing that don't take this, take this with a grain of salt, but I've heard that the need to pee before, and this happens with men and women. So it's not a, um, it's not one of those, uh, lower abdominal issues. Um, the need to pee before a workout is 
like an instinctual way to mark your territory before battle. Ah, I love it. I love that one. <laughs> um, but that's a, like like part of that, I guess, the mental you're flight, get, You know, when response, we're in class right? next, someone's going to put their hand up. Excuse me, I have to mark my territory. Can right. I? <laughs> I've explained that to a, a few people. I don't know if they appreciate it or if not. someone but says that in cool. one of my classes, I'm going to just applaud them slowly. <laughs> no, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. Um, so, so this, um, so you have two really, really opposite um, nerv- nervous system responses right. um, to different stimuli, and um, and then just just to briefly touch on it, the central nervous system um, it, it it doesn't really respond to stimulus in the same way. It responds like think about it like these are pre responses, like there you have a trigger, and then yeah. these uh, two nervous systems kick in. The central nervous system becomes affected by whatever you do to it in that response and then later has the effect. So if you, right before you lift a heavy weight, you have this massive um, sympathetic nervous response, so palms get sweaty, all that, you lift the heavy weight and you do it repeatedly, then your central nervous system is going to respond after that and we can get a lot of central nervous system fatigue and that um, is a lot of our programming is actually dictated around the central nervous system because that will fatigue well before your sympathetic and parasympathetic uh, responses because it's um, the body's so used to um, um, responding like in a daily, hourly basis between these parasympathetic mm-hmm. and sympathetic. And so the point of, of going over all this is like a lot of people will hear about this very, like most people know that cortisol is part yeah. of the sympathetic and, yeah. you know, and they know that it's the fight or flight response. Most people know, but a little bit less will know about the rest and digest and parasympathetic. Um, but but a lot of people won't know that these two are not, like I said, they're juxtaposed and opposites, but they are not enemies working against each other. They actually work in harmony. Mm-hmm. Um, so So they work opposite to each other. They work in conjunction with one another and they work independently as well. So they work in a lot of different ways together in the body and that's what makes it complex. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how they, what it is, how Mm -hmm. it works and uh, how to recognize it. Right. The, um, so you mentioned cortisol and uh, we talked more in depth last time about uh, the hormone itself, but what role does cortisol play with regards to these? Well, um, so when you, when your body um, con- has a con- confront is a good word. So when your body's confronted with a with a stressor, um, like I said, your um, sympathetic nervous system turns on. And what does it turn on? It turns on specific hormones right. to dictate the blood flow, the you know the the elevation in heart rate, where the blood needs to go. That's all directed by cortisol, epinephrine, which is part of the adrenal gland, um, so like adrenaline. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so these hormones like are usually associated with those types of responses and um, but but they're also they're also prevalent when like we talked about last podcast, when you wake up. When you wake up in the morning, right. you have a surge of cortisol that goes through your body to tell you, "Hey, let's let's wake up." <laughs> right. You know, let let's do things. And and uh, the fight or flight response is like it, it's important to your everyday life. Like mm-hmm. you, well, it should not be avoided. It um in in and you know take that with a grain of salt. But we never want to like I said these these systems work in harmony with one another, and it's not good versus bad. Mm-hmm. Or, or mm-hmm. and it's 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 more of uh, balancing the systems and making sure your sure your systems are balanced. And I I would go so far to say if you took the massive the majority of the population, not the people like in our gym, uh, but if you took the majority of the population, people need to be exposed more exposed to the fight or flight response uh, than the other way around to to have a balanced system. Um, we can, we can touch on that a little bit more later if you want, but, um, it's, yeah, it's, well, it's, yeah, uh, I, I think when, when we're talking about these systems, it's, they happen automatically, right? Like our body res- 
responds without me being like, oh, I need to increase my heart rate. Like I'm not consciously doing that. Like the body reacts that way. So um, we want to understand why it's happening so that we can – in is is it safe to say in some way we want to try to either grab those nerves and run with it and use that or sometimes we want to say whoa slow down i need to pull back here like do you know what i mean yep yep um so yeah that's a good one um so number one i would say that you can't control your heart rate elevating but you can control how your what nervous system you're tapping into by what stimulates you. Okay. Okay. So if what I mean is public speaking, we'll take use that as an, ex- that as an example. Um, a lot of, a lot of public speakers look like just naturals. Like they're up there yeah. and there's no shakiness in their voice. And, yeah. um, and, and they've learned to, um, how, what do you, what do you think is happening there with that public speaker who, do you think they're in a, more specifically, do you think they've like learned to be in a parasympathetic, make that a parasympathetic response of, uh, other than a sympathetic? Um, wow. I, I wish I knew, <laughs> but, no, but what, no, what would but, you guess? Yeah, what would you guess? I think... I think they, I think they learn, like, I don't know if, what I want to say is I think they learn to ride the wave. So, like, I think they know, um, I think they have, in, they're very in tune with themselves to know which, which way to go almost is what I'm saying. So, like, um, I think it takes time and practice and exposing yourself in that situation so that you can feel that response and then be able to look back on it and whether they've videotaped themselves or something to look back on the situation and be like, I know what happened in that moment and I can correct it. So um, I don't think I really answered your question. No, no, you did. And you, you hit the nail on the head, except for, I think one thing I it's I would only thing I would say is that it's not that thought out <laughs> okay it's yeah the, the, like so what what you I know I what know. you're saying so it's let me I, let me explain okay so what you're saying <laughs> is that the public speaker would like observe the and think about their parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system um and but but you said one thing you said the word exposure and yeah. that's all that it is they've exposed themselves enough that that sympathetic nervous response it takes more to stimulate it um and and they are more comfortable with the uncomfortable so yes. they are still in that fight or flight mode but hey that's where they live and that's yeah. where so they've naturally become accustomed to those hormones um in their body and they don't really like have the same dramatic effect because they're like relax like they know subconsciously what it is. They're it's like relax oh. i've been here before yeah. through exposure right so it's like to to put this in an analogy how do you strength train right you yeah. expose yourself yeah. to heavy Exposure. weights yeah. they 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 tear apart your muscle tissue like yeah. they like we've talked about before and you grow back stronger the same thing happens with your nervous system in un- uncomfortable situations and we know this is 100 percent true with your central nervous system Mm -hmm. um athletes that train longer and have more excuse me have more of an experience um with things that stimulate central nervous system like um high power outputs and Mm -hmm. um and heavy weights um those athletes they, they can last longer in cycles so where we introduce a deload week to deload the central nervous system because it needs a break. It needs to rest and digest for an entire week. Yeah. Um, the the athlete that has been exposed to it longer can can last in more weeks in a cycle. Um, so the beginner um, might might need a, a deload week every every three to four weeks. Um, this is just based on central nervous system stuff. Um, and then a, a, an advanced 
athlete will um will only require one sometimes eight to 12 weeks but right. um and that that's assuming that the training is the same which is not so don't take that with a grain of salt as well <laughs> this is just an example for central nervous system but um back to the the sympathetic nervous system that's what you're talking about is is i think is the exposure to it mm-hmm. and and so it is called the fight or flight response and in responding to the response we have a lot of um information out there to tell us like hey tap into your parasympathetic nervous system and um and really like that one's it's controllable but the main things that help it like sleep and nutrition um like that's proper proper diet i mean you can only control it to an extent like get your eight hours Mm -hmm. um don't and (laughs) it's funny because some people be like well no you can do this and this and this and this and i'm like you are doing the opposite of what you need to do right now because you're <laughs> overthinking it all and you're causing that right now by telling me you need your your like amazing pillow and like you're all stressed out about quality of your sleep and like if you're bouncing off the walls about it, then you know, you're doing the opposite. You're actually yeah. doing harm. Yeah. Whereas and and I'm not saying all that stuff's bad, like like your um the cooling pillows and figuring out your sleep but it's this kind of harmonious balance between the two where it's like, okay, yeah, like get your sleep in order, but it doesn't have to be in order today. And that's the key to it. Um, uh, to me is is exposure in productive and controlled ways to your fight or flight and not flighting from your fight or flight, like actually diving into it and saying, okay, it's, it's okay to be uncomfortable and further it's actually beneficial and I want to compete yeah. So, and you, you said this, um, the most people need to be exposed to more of a fight or flight. So, yeah. um, can you elaborate a bit on that? Like where, why do you say that? And, um, well, okay. So we've kind of established that your fight or flight, um, is less sensitive, I guess. Um, the more by exposure. So the more heavy barbells you lift, um, the less right. fight or flight you're going to have, right? So um, in that moment, that's why training is training. Competition is competition. Training, the big difference um, from a hormonal level is that you're not, you're not in full-fledged cortisol production, epinephrine, definitely not epinephrine production. Um, the goal isn't to get there in your training. It's to, you know, just step outside of the comfort zone and not like smash through it but it's not to be in it either. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whereas when you're, when you're in competition, that's like full fledged fight or flight mode. And that needs, should happen with people. You should step into those arenas in life. If you use that as a metaphor, um, or take it for face value, you should step into those arenas in life. Um, as much as you can, as much as your nervous system can handle, because it's when we don't expose that enough that, um, ironically, we don't adapt well to the, that nervous system production mm-hmm. and, and the hormones that it produces. So one little ounce of cortisol that when you're not used to it, it's like, you know, someone who doesn't drink that has a beer yeah. and they're like on their ass because, yeah. and uh, I mean, you build up a tolerance. Yeah. You, you build up <laughs> the cortisol tolerance and, and, um, too much of that is not good, um, because it leads us to hormone exhaustion. But, um, that's why we can't smash through the comfort zone. So the the person that's comfortable in their everyday life and, you know, just like um, like purely only listens to instincts, um, th- they, they hmm. don't do well with the fight or flight. And then that further causes them to go, oh, that's not good. I have to get re- more rest and digest. And it's like that could be the furthest thing from the truth for you. Yeah. Um, we don't know. We'd have to uncut. That's why it's good to know a lot more about the individual and where they're at rather than just prescribe them shit that you think is good, but it might not be right. Mm -hmm. So yes, rest and digest and parasympathetic stuff like, um, having hot baths, um, and, and, and cold showers, really, really good stuff to do. Um, but right. Like I said, everything in balance, right? Right. Um, so I want to kind of talk about um, supplements. So, like, what's your what's your take? Um, is there when is it an appropriate time? Is there an appropriate time to take like hormonal supplements or? Okay, so first thing I'm gonna say is I'm not a doctor. <laughs> 
Um, I would only take a supplement for my hormones if a doctor told me to and prescribe it for me. Yeah. That's it. That's the only time I would. And you might hear like, oh, melatonin is good for sleep and all this. But what you're doing by taking an unprescribed hormone is causing an unnecessary dependence on the, that hormone. Mm-hmm. And what that does, even if a doctor prescribes you a hormone, what's going to happen when you take a hormone orally or you inject one or whatever, however they do it, um, <laughs> what's going to happen is you, you're going to become dependent on that hormone and your body will have hormonal exhaustion and you're causing your own hormonal fatigue. So if you have trouble sleeping and you take melatonin forever, your, your, um, your body's going to be dependent right. on melatonin because when you don't get it, holy shit, you're going to have even more trouble sleeping. And that's why what they say about coffee, oh, if yeah. you have more like, and, and because it causes such, such big cortisol spikes, if you have too much, like mm-hmm. I, I'm a coffee lover and I'll drink coffee till I die. I don't care what it does. My, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm right half joking. <laughs> um, lifeblood of champions. <laughs> black but uh, yes, only black coffee. If you're in my 9 a.m. class and you're listening, <laughs> <laughs> then you get it. But um, no, anyways, so um, yeah, you become, you're even with different stimulus, your, your body can become dependent on hormone production and exhausted by it. Um, and, and so, um, I mean, the case in point is human growth hormone. It's, it's illegal for a reason mm-hmm. because it's so unhealthy to, to, uh, to take, but some doctors prescribe it to patients who have gotten in car crashes and need like a quick, um, like pregnizone for, um, for pregnant women. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and like the list goes on, but like, yes, hormones are prescribed, but in certain situations for certain people at certain times. And, uh, I'm sorry, but none of, none of us, unless we're doctors, um, and, and know about hormones at that level are, um, qualified enough to, to, to take yeah. them, um, in my mind. So with supplementations, I would stick to a hard, fast rule of only vitamins and minerals, mm-hmm. um, to facilitate certain things that, and even then I would <laughs> look into that with a doctor just cause that's who I am. But I think vitamins and minerals, like, um, is it like, uh, what's the, the Epsom salts? What is that one? Um, I take it every night. It's the only supplement I take. There's zinc and magnesium. Oh, magnesium. I take those two things and right. yeah, that's, it's kind of harmless. You just pee it out, but <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not a doctor, so um, I'm not going to speak to taking it, but I, I would be fearful of taking hormonal supplements without um, prescription. So, mm-hmm. yeah. All right. Well, um, that's, that sums up a lot <laughs> talking about the, uh, the nervous system and, uh, the response, um, anything else you'd like to add when it comes to thinking about the gym, the fitness? Yeah. Just, um, just to, so I know we all want to get the most we can. Well, a lot of us want to get the most we can out of our fitness. So we'll look to the supplementation and that, um, so that we, but when it comes down to it, it's kind of, you have to look at supplements and hormones um, in, in a way, in such a way that, that there's no magic pill. And that's what we're looking for oh, when yeah. we're looking for supplementation. And so when we, when we look at our, when, when we have, I don't mean a shitty lifestyle in general. I mean, when we have a shitty hormonal lifestyle, <laughs> then, and we try to supplement out of a shitty hormonal lifestyle, it's just like, band-aid solution yeah, right totally. so you're, you're not actually fixing the root cause of the issue um and a lot of athletes will want to go to that um so it, it, what we have to realize is that there's only first of all we our bodies require balance whether we're we we think we're a special like high performing athlete or we are not we still have a human body and it still has the exact same hormones as other human bodies and they need to be in balance. Now yours might be resilient, but they still need balance. So what I would say about this is that if you're trying to get the most out of the gym, the best thing you can do is make your life less busy and less rat race ish. Okay. And that's the best way to control the, your hormonal response is to really look at your life because hormonal response happens 
um, like the specifically the sympathetic nervous system, the fight or flight happens because it you're you're surprised. So right. picture yeah. picture your your schedule, okay? You picture your day, and you have everybody in some way different people different personalities but people have expectations to their day like you know you wake up and especially on a work day um now i want you to let's let's go through a day oh okay? gosh my days are very different but okay let's go let it, let's just i'm gonna walk you through it yep. okay so um and we'll we'll do yes or no's so you 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 wake up to an alarm yes okay boom right away um sympathetic like huge cortisol response, right? Um, fight or flight right from the get-go. What, when you wake up, do you have a coffee? Within 15, 20 minutes, yes. Okay, so again, spiking that cortisol, all right? Um, now, think back to like, not right now, but in a normal times. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I think everybody's in a pretty different situation right now. You've got nurses running around, can't do anything about this fight or flight response. And first thing I want to do is say thank you to you guys. <laughs> um, you guys are amazing and uh, you're fighting the good fight right now, but just sidebar. Um, back to you, Em. <laughs> um, so you are waking up, having a coffee, you got yeah. these cortisol spikes. And so then what? You're You're on your way to the gym, right? Yep. So you're, you're, you're doing your commute. So what do you, do you listen to a podcast on your commute? Um, no, I actually usually, um, it's really early in the morning. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll usually just have the radio on, not loud. Um, sometimes okay. it's, I just like to think when I drive. Okay. So, sometimes so you're kind of zoning there, out, but thinking in thinking. your own thoughts. So that's a great balance. Okay. You've just, you just added, um, like that's kind mm -hmm. of more of a, um, stimulus for that parasympathetic yeah. nervous system that rest and digest um when you get to the gym though yeah it's it's I game to, on i have to turn all the lights so, on it's very bright yeah and turn the lights on it's early morning i have to um i have to wake up because <laughs> i got to do a job at 6 a.m so right. um turn the music on i actually like to come in turn the lights and music on right away because it does stimulate me like it, it wakes me up yep um very good use of that <laughs> fight or flight response and then people start coming in and and we go start coaching right and coaching is cool this is a cool example because you're going to have both this is when they're both in harmony because social interactions that are positive mm. stimulate parasympathetic nervous system okay um but part of coaching is public speaking yeah. and managing different personalities yeah. and um, kind of your, your it spotlight is on you a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so that also that, stimulates. Like you're making me nervous right now. Right. <laughs> right. Thinking about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, well, I guess and it is, part right? of it, part of, uh, part of that is, is preparation and expectation. Right. So, yeah. so now all right, I want you to picture, this is your normal day, right? Yeah. So on your way in, you get a flat tire, okay? Uh-huh. What's your response? My response is to call you. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, and, and and then on your way out to the tire, you drop your phone and you break it. Oh, no, that happened. <laughs> I broke my phone today, guys. Um <laughs> So you don't have your phone to call. <laughs> what what's going on in your in your body? Like, how does that physically feel? Oh my god, I feel sick. I would probably feel sick. Okay, so so yeah, you're getting that nausea yeah. feeling. So, but the point is, we've already been over all this stuff on how it yeah. feels and how to recognize yeah. it. But the point of this is like your natural cortisol responses, like waking up, turning on the lights, coaching a class. They're all really good. Okay. Mm -hmm it's the responses that are a surprise to you that you weren't expecting those like, Oh my God, I got a flat tire. Oh my God, I dropped my phone. That doesn't happen every day. But yeah. if you, you know, live any, like even like an ounce of an ambitious life, like, like you're, you're not just like sitting on your butt all day. If you are just getting out in the world at all, you have surprises, yeah. small or big, like a flat tire is a big example, but I mean, and, and they're, they're sprinkled in, um, so when you have too many of those unexpected, you know, um, surprises and like being a business owner, I can tell you that <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's a lot. I mean, it'll take its, it, 
it'll take its toll over time. Yeah. And and that's what we have to be concerned about. That that's the rat race. And no, you can't account for everything. Okay. So, but you can manage it however you'd like. I am a kind of. Um, if, I've been studying kind of personalities lately and uh, temperaments <laughs> and um, I'm more of a like analytical personality. So like organized and I love having my schedule because the schedule helps my, um, you know, fight or flight versus rest and digest response. Um, and, and I don't think about that when I'm doing my schedule. I'm just, yeah. but, uh, but it helps but to tool. manage that. It's a tool yeah. so that my, life doesn't spiral Mm -hmm. and when your life spirals that's those kind of the times that everybody's thinking of like the busy life that so um my big three that are in you're in control of because is number one sleep Mm -hmm. okay And, and i've always said that but if you don't get enough sleep you're already um you're yeah. already at a loss okay you're at a deficit um and and your your body's going to um be in fight or flight way more than it should but be but have you you've ever experienced and i'm sure you can answer this but you, have you had those nights where you don't get sleep and the next day you're like holy shit i'm functioning really well so yes. that's your body being like that's cortisol and adrenaline yeah right um, they're pumping and then two yeah. three days and you're like crash hard <laughs> right because that's the thing like all of these things we're talking about are very have very long-term effects so that's mm-hmm. a very short-term right um symptom of like the no and this is funny that you bring this up because when I did triathlons um and I, I raced it like a pretty high level and um my coach was big on sleep before your race two nights before didn't care about one night before That's it was two nights before interesting. Yeah. um we was big on sleep a lot of the time but he was like adamant about sleep two nights That's before really smart. because it's not going to have an effect the day after it's going to have a compounding effects two days later but that's like just a little side note about like that kind of coincides with what I'm I saying. I thought of so. it more like you're probably not going to get a good sleep the night before because of nerves and that. So you might well, as well. Yeah. And, right? and, and that's, that's definitely true. Um, mm-hmm. so, so, um, sleep and getting enough of it and getting quality number one, um, number, and, and I'm so, I know this is long, but like when you don't get enough sleep, um, there's a big, like if you study, not even study, if you Google search this, one of the main symptoms and signs that you don't get enough sleep is digestive issues. Yes. What do we just talk about, about cortisol? And like, that's a direct response from being in fight or flight too much. So not enough sleep, you're, you're at a deficit Mm -hmm. right away. Um, so the next big one, because every time you use this tool, it is a surprise to you because it's never at your expectations, you don't know what's coming next. Oh, I'm so intrigued. Can you what? guess? No. You use it every day, all day. Your phone? Yeah. Okay. It's always a yeah. surprise. It stimulates, and specifically social media, because that's where right. most people spend their time on their phone, but also other apps and stuff. It's it's geared towards, like we talked about, tapping into your dopamine yeah. uh, response, and your phone and your, um, I mean, some people are, can be good at controlling this on their phone but um i mean that's the number control your your behavior on your 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 devices we'll call it yeah that is like like number two they're smart they are smart. they're smart devices smartphones <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> but like those are the big two if you can get a grip on that stuff oh my god um like yeah. like you're already like you're you're ahead of the game number number three is um is balancing your stress um from good and bad stress and 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 that's like very that's not as specific but because now we're getting into more personal life lifestyles and you know um well number three should be nutrition but i mean that's another podcast but so number three nutrition um because we we need to rest and digest and um there's a the the thing about nutrition that i have in this topic and this is just my own theory based on the information that we know and that we've discussed. Mm-hmm. Okay. So name some popular nutri- nutrition trends as of oh, the last like couple of years. Keto. Keto. Okay. Fast, intermittent fasting. Inter- okay. Stop. You're done. done. Okay. The, the top two you just said. Yeah. Okay. So keto and intermittent fasting um, is about like less 
is is like is more right like so intermittent fasting more so because Mm -hmm. you're you're not eating it's just simply not eating for and keep in mind i do this but why do you think intermittent fasting is so big nowadays and such a big trend not saying it's not good it's it's i love it why is it a trend um i don't know because people uh I don't know. Like, have you ever done it? Have no. you ever tried it? <laughs> I yeah. love to eat, Kevin. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> that was a loaded question. <laughs> um, As in, like, I can't go long without eating. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. You love to eat frequently. And um, every time I see him, she's eating. She ate before this pod got. <laughs> um, and she's going to eat and after. And I'm nervous. It. You know what? I'm actually nervous because I usually have food with me um, before I leave the house. I packed an apple and that's all I have. And that kind of makes me nervous. Oh. Let's hope I don't get a flat tire. <laughs> Cause you don't have a phone either. Um, no. So, so my theory is that we, we say that that's how the, our paleo ancestors ate was in this intermittent fasted way because they couldn't guarantee meals. And I call bullshit. I say that this is this intermittent fast to an extent, but I, I say this intermittent fasting is a response to our sedentary lifestyles because we are so plugged in so much more plugged in than we ever have been in all of human history. Mm -hmm. We sit on our asses so much more nowadays. Yeah. So our response to that is we don't need as many calories in, simply put. And uh, we're already resting and digesting, Mm. we think. Mm. But we're sitting on our asses with cortisol pumping through our veins because we're on Facebook. Yeah, or drinking our coffee. Drinking our coffee. And, and, you know, and, and then we're getting all hyped up about the news and coronavirus. And it's all this like stress ball of, of, of hormone imbalance. And all you have to do is just take a step back, take a step above your lifestyle and observe it and, um, and, and see. So that's just a Kevin theory about um, – about intermittent fasting, chir- like not chirping it, chirping it. I do it uh, because I like it, and I and guess what? I do sit on my butt a lot because I have programming and doing, doing yeah. that sort of thing. But I mean, just a little fun fact that I thought I'd share with people. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it's about managing the lifestyle first and foremost. Right. So we had rest and recover or sleep. Sleep. Um, we had manage your devices, nutrition. Balance nutrition, balance yeah. Balance and nutrition. And then, uh, yeah, just be able to take a step back and observe your lifestyle and see what you can, like, see what you can do away with. Mm-hmm. Um, m- hormones like less things going on. So the more simple your life, you know, the mm-hmm. more your hormone- hormones are going to appreciate that. Right on. Thank you again, Kevin. Thanks, Em.